Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who were in mourning. Exult, and be satisfied at her consoling breaths. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. My brothers and sisters, welcome to Holy Trinity Sloan Square in London for this celebration of the Eucharist. We come together today to draw near to the God who has drawn near to us in his Son, Jesus Christ. And on Mothering Sunday, we come to give thanks for our mothers and commend them, living or departed, to the eternal love of God. But first, so conscious at this time of our frailties, our vulnerabilities, our faults and our failures. Let us call to mind our sins and confess them to our Heavenly Father. In the wilderness we find your grace. You love us with an everlasting love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. There is none but you to uphold our cause. Our sin cries out, and our guilt is great. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Heal us, O Lord, and we shall be healed. Restore us, and we shall know your joy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of compassion, whose Son, Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We listen to the readings. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. The man Elkanah and all his household went up to offer the Lord the yearly sacrifice and to pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, as soon as the child is weaned, I will bring him that he may appear in the presence of the Lord 
and remain there forever. I will offer him as a Nazarite for all time. Her husband Elkanah said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord establish his word. So the woman remained and nursed her son until she weaned him. When she had weaned him, she took him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an epaph of flour, and a skin of wine. She brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh, and the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull, and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who is standing here in your presence, praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me the petition that I made to him. Therefore I have lent him to the Lord, as long as he lives, he is given to the Lord. She left him there for the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is 127. The response is, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guards keep watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. Unless, Unless the Lord, the Lord builds build the house, the house those, those who, who build, build it labor, labor in vain. Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, are the sons of one's youth. Unless, Unless the Lord, Lord builds, builds the house, house those, those who build, build it labor in vain. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. If we are being afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. If we are being consoled, it is for your consolation, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we are also suffering. Our hope for you is unshaken. For we know that as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our consolation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord.
And Jesus' father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's 130 years this year since Holy Trinity Church opened its doors to the people of Sloan Square. Today is the first Sunday in all that time that public worship hasn't taken place. At the height of the Blitz in the Second World War, the bombs brought the roof of what Sir John Betjeman was to call the Cathedral of the Arts and Crafts crashing to the floor. You can still see the scorch marks of the burning timbers that fell onto the marble paving below that night, themselves mostly cracked by the force of the impact. But not even that catastrophe brought public worship to a close. And the parish magazine of the day records how my predecessor, Father Christopher Cheshire, carried on leading his people in prayer and praise as they picked themselves up, brushed themselves down to start all over again. There are many similarities and many differences between that war that devastated this church building and the coronavirus pandemic that is devouring many lives as it spreads around the world. Perhaps one of the differences is that back in the 1940s, deaths impending arrival, at least for those who were in this country, was announced by an air raid siren, and the population had a little time to scramble into air raid shelters in their back gardens or down onto the underground. But in our day, we face an invisible enemy whose deadly presence goes unseen until symptoms appear, by which time, for some, it is too late. Indeed, even our best instincts to visit the vulnerable and elderly, to spare them the pain of isolation, can so easily result in another infection. No wonder that on this Mothering Sunday, when those of us who are fortunate enough to have mothers alive and within reach, and want to embrace them and kiss them and thank them for all that they are and do, have been told in no uncertain terms to stay away from mum. I'm going to be finding that very difficult personally myself. But if we face an invisible enemy, we do so accompanied by a visible friend. 
Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is present with us today by his Spirit and in the life of his body, the Church. By his Spirit, Jesus is with you now and invites you not to live in fear and despair, but to look to the future, whatever it brings, with confidence in Christ. For as St. Paul said, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. This is a time for each of us to live our faith more intensely and to develop a daily rule of life to enable us in this crisis to fortify our spiritual resilience whose fruit should be a flowering of faith, hope and love. Yes, we need to keep exercising our bodies, but we mustn't neglect to exercise our souls too in daily prayer. It will be by the Holy Spirit that you make a spiritual communion today as you express before God your deepest desire to be united with him as bread on this altar is broken and wine outpoured. Be sure to do it every day. And Jesus is with you too in the life of his body, the church, of which you remain a member alive or dead that great company of saints on earth and heaven that nurtures all its children. Remember that the origins of Mothering Sunday are found centuries ago in the tradition of returning to your mother church, where you'd been baptized, especially for those in domestic service for whom it was the only day of the year that they could leave their occupations and gather together with their families. So the church today is challenged to nurture its young in new circumstances where public worship is prohibited, but in which we can come together like this, thanks to the internet, connected to each other, for example, by the telephone, through which we can seek to express the love of God by checking on all those who are most vulnerable and alone at this time. And this week, our church school is due to open its doors to educate the children of key workers. And Holy Trinity Church will be a distribution centre for homework and school meals. In the Gospel reading this morning, we meet Mary and Joseph in the temple where they've taken their firstborn son, Jesus, to present him to God according to the religious traditions of the day. There, they meet two wise and devout servants of God, Simeon and Anna. Simeon's reflection over the years had led him to a sober understanding of the destiny of the Messiah when he finally appeared. Jesus would arouse fierce opposition as he lived and ministered with deep integrity and revealed the inner thoughts and motives 
of those who held power in the land. And that would inevitably involve Mary in the dark consequences of her son's ministry. A sword, Simeon said, would pierce her heart. There is so much joy in motherhood, but a lot of pain as well. And it starts from the very beginning. Today, there are many mothers across the globe who will know that pain as their anxiety and fear for the safety of their children mounts at this time that the coronavirus is close at hand. Mothers who worry for what the future holds for those for whom they would give their lives. Indeed, you don't have to be a mother to be gripped by those emotions. There will be broken hearts as family members fall sick. Friends and acquaintances die. Financial plans are ripped to shreds and life as we know it changes irrevocably. My brothers and sisters, the time will come when we must reflect deeply on what has happened to us and how it must change what we do and think and say. But for now, at a time like this, as we live a Good Friday, as people of faith, we must also live as those who know that Easter Day will come. As St Paul said in his letter to the Romans, for I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, we begin by bringing you thanks for this new day, for all of the mercies you show in our daily life. For the infrastructure that surrounds us, seeking to guide and care for us in these challenging times. For the gift of technology, enabling us to be in touch with those whom we love and those who need our encouragement and support.
we pray for all those feeling the challenging frustration of being apart from loved ones at this time, especially children from their mothers, mothers from their children. May this experience help us to feel more at one with those of our brothers and sisters who have had this experience in their lives for many years. For those brothers and sisters of ours who have had to face genocide, extreme poverty, hatred and warfare which tears communities apart. May this experience bind us together as one in Jesus Christ, that we may seek to work together for a world where peace prevails and lives are fulfilled. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, seeking to be the very presence of Christ in the world, even at a time when all we thought we knew has been taken from us. Inspire the thoughts of our hearts and minds that we may find new and creative ways to spread forth the good news of the gospel. We pray for those who lead the church, especially praying for Justin, our Archbishop. Sarah, Bishop of London, Graham, our area Bishop of Kensington, Jenny, our area Dean, and Father Nicholas, Rector of this parish. Support and sustain all those who seek to minister in your holy name that your will may be done and your kingdom will come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, for Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, and all those who hold offices of leadership and authority at this time. May they seek your wisdom, and may you surround them with good counsel, so that policies may come forth which protect the vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. Those who have been deeply affected by the coronavirus. Those whose other illnesses are becoming more acute because of the overwhelming status of the NHS. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
pray for all those who have recently died. Those whose anniversaries fall at this time. In a moment of quiet, you remember them before you now. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. And rise in glory. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And now I invite you to stand if you can. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, God. be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, as a mother you gather your people to you. You comfort us in sorrow and bind up our wounds. In your compassion bring grace and forgiveness. And may your love in the sacrament prepare us for the beauty of heaven, where you are alive and reign, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. 
Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to pray for the coming of the Kingdom. And so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Now I invite you to make a spiritual communion as Father Grant leads us in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life and the one true vine. I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I seek you. I worship and adore you. Since I cannot receive you in bread and wine, I pray that you will come into my heart and soul, that I may be united to you by your all-powerful and ever-present Holy Spirit. Let me receive you and be nourished by you. Become for me the manna in my wilderness, the bread of angels for my very human journey through time, a foretaste of the heavenly banquet and solace in the hour of my death. I pray all this, trusting that you yourself are our life, our peace, and our everlasting joy. Amen. Amen.
The Lord anointed my eyes. I went, I washed, I saw, and I believed in God. Let us pray. Loving God as a mother feeds her children at the breast, you feed us in this sacrament with the food and drink of eternal life. Help us who have tasted your goodness to grow in grace within the household of faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, a warm welcome to you all this morning to Holy Trinity Church in Sloane Square, and thank you for joining us in this act of worship. In these uncertain times, we continue to open our church for private prayer every day from half past ten until half past five. That is, until we are instructed not to. But you can join us in worship on our Facebook page Tuesday to Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning for morning prayer and at 6 o'clock in the evening for evening prayer and benediction. On Wednesday night at 6 o'clock a celebration of the Eucharist and on Sunday as we have today a celebration of the Eucharist at 11. We really want to stay in touch with our community and Father Grant and I will continue to ring round members of the congregation. Don't hesitate to be in touch with us. Drop us an email if you have a special request for prayer or know a person who is sick and needs God's grace. In all kinds of ways, this is an opportunity for us to look after each other. And of course, one of the ways that we will do that as well is to buy simply and not to strip our shops of food. Let's think, my brothers and sisters, about the needs of others and especially the needs of those doctors and nurses and of teachers and all working on the front line in this battle who need sustenance as well. It's been wonderful to be with you on this Mothering Sunday when we would traditionally, of course, distribute posies of daffodils at the end of the service. Well, we only have one posy here this morning uh, of flowers from the rectory garden, but um, I'm going to bless these and offer them to all mothers on this special day. And I'll ask Father, join, Father Grant to join me as we pray. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of motherhood. We thank you for our own mothers, living or departed, on this their special day. May we live as those who have been loved and are loved by you in ways that we can never imagine or dream. Bless these flowers that they may reflect the beauty of the love of mothers 
the beauty of your love for each of us. Amen. Thank you to our church warden, Geoffrey Cable, who has joined us this morning, and with Carolyn Hallett, our other church warden, with the staff of Holy Trinity, are working so hard to ensure that the life of our church moves forward day by day. If you are able, would you stand for the blessing? The Lord be with you, and also with you. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>